Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, everybody. It's time for our annual audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It helps us understand our audience better, know what you like and don't like, how you listen to the show. It also helps us tell advertisers what kind of people listen. But I promise you, your feedback is always kept personally anonymous. All you have to do is visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It'll just take a few minutes and it'll help us make Twit even better. We really appreciate your support and any help you can give us. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Android App Arena, episode 88 for Wednesday, March 9th, 2016. Apps for Wear. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Automatic, the connected car company that improves your driving and integrates your car into your digital life. For more information, visit automatic.com slash twit and enter the code twit to get 20% off your purchase. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's been quite a while since I checked in on some of the neat advances in the world of Android Wear, specifically apps that are designed with wearables in mind. Hey, that rhymed. Uh, I was sent a collection of neat Wear apps by Steve Teapot or Teapot. He's a fan of the show. And well, I love it when you guys pick my apps for me. It shows me what you're into at the moment. And I end up discovering some new gems along the way that I hadn't seen before. So thanks to Steve, here are three apps for Android Wear that you can install right now. First up, your watch is connected to your phone, hopefully. Uh, that means your watch can control aspects of your phone remotely, and that could come in particularly handy when taking pictures. Pix2Cam for Android Wear turns your watch into a full remote control over most of the essential camera functions on your phone, even when the phone's display is off and the device is sitting there idle and locked. Kind of crazy. I'll go ahead and launch the app on my Moto 360 and right away, I see the camera feed from my phone. Now in camera mode, I have controls over things like the resolution of my images, uh, whether I want my flash to fire off or not. There's a timer over here on the side and a camera switch for changing between the front and rear facing cameras on the phone. And of course, the all important shutter button to take the picture. I can also switch over to video mode here up top. That also gives me the option of turning the flash on to act as torch mode for extra lighting. And there's some resolution settings that can be tweaked there as well. You can control your phone's camera even when you're away from it. And it works pretty flawlessly for me and my Nexus 6P. Try pix to cam for yourself for $1.99 in the Play Store. As far as I'm concerned, the jury is still out when it comes to whether gaming on a wearable device like a smartwatch is ideal. Sometimes it seems like a classic case of just because you can doesn't mean you should. But this game actually works pretty well on the small screen. Papercraft was designed specifically for Android Wear, and it even brings a bit of material design to the game equation. It's rather simple. Papercraft is a side-scrolling shooter where you are this little teal triangle on the left side of the screen, firing off your little lasers at the colorful shapes that march towards you from the right side of the screen. They appear in all different types of formations throughout each level, so you'll have to swipe up and down and all around to shoot them all dead. Some of them have the ability to block your shots from the front, so if you swipe to the right, you'll dart into the middle of the playfield and reverse your course so your shots will hit them from behind. That only lasts for a second. That allows you to kind of get rid of them and then go back to your normal spot on the left side of the screen. Now, as is usually the case, things get progressively harder over time. Not made very much easier by the small screen real estate that you have on your watch, but it's still a fun little game and completely open source, by the way, if you want to take a peek at the code. Find Papercraft for free in the Play Store.
Here's another entry in the category of should games actually exist on wearable devices. Uh, but this one carries with it enough old school charm that I think it kind of works. It's called Sphere Rule. And it's modeled after the Marble Maze games you may have played as a kid. There are 50 levels within Sphere Rule, but many are so difficult that you might never see all of them in the end. Each level shows a wooden maze with multiple depth platforms seen from the top-down perspective. So as you rotate your watch, the platform is tilted in that direction, and the marble begins to roll through the maze with varying degrees of speed and intensity that's kind of matched to your movements. There are plenty of little holes and obstacles that you'll have to avoid as you maneuver through the maze, and that's the really difficult part. Some levels include more than one marble at any given time, and ultimately, you're trying to get them to the end point so you can advance to the next level. This game is hard, no doubt about it, but it's kind of perfectly matched for the small circular screen on my Moto 360, and I'm pretty sure I had a toy watch just like this as a kid in real life, so you know, it kind of makes me smile for that reason. To be young again. Find Sphere Rule in the Play Store for 99 cents. So, after spending a little more time with those two games, yes, they're neat, and yes, they play well for what they are, but I don't know. Ultimately, I'm still not very convinced that I will ever reach for my watch instead of my phone when I want to bang out a quick game while I'm just killing time. I just don't see it. Maybe we just haven't seen the platform-defining game for smartwatches yet. Not saying it'll never happen, just saying maybe it hasn't quite happened yet. That's all I'm saying. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Automatic. Chances are your car hasn't kept up with technology over the years. That's where Automatic comes in. It's a small adapter that turns any car into a connected car. Just plug the Automatic into the same port that your mechanic uses to diagnose engine problems, and it opens up a world of possibilities. Automatic lets you keep track of your fuel mileage, your vehicle health, you can expense business trips with a tap. You can even link your car to the connected devices that power your life. What's that you know, check engine light really mean when it appears? Automatic's going to tell you before you take your car into the shop. So you know whether it's really, really serious or not. Automatic can also integrate with your Nest thermostat to know when you're home. And can even provide the answer to one of life's most common questions, where on earth did I park my car? Automatic has been installed in my car for months now, and the aggregated data over time is pretty fascinating when you start digging into it, seeing just how much it actually costs in both gas and dollars to make that quick trip to the grocery store is both enlightening and well, kind of frightening, to be honest. Uh, the costs add up, and you really kind of see that when you're taking a look at the data inside Automatic. Now, it works on nearly every car made after 1996. It takes only minutes to install and connects to your iPhone or your Android device over Bluetooth. You get real-time performance data. There's intelligent coaching that'll help you maximize your fuel economy, reduce wear and tear on your vehicle. Dashboard web app actually provides granular information and lets you export your trips out if you need to. It gives you plain English explanation uh, for your check engine light and automatic app platform integrates with things like Nest, Your Mechanic, FreshBooks, and more. There's also, you know, expense business expense apps like Concur and Expensify. It even works with If This Then That, so you can get really nerdy with how you integrate your car into your digital life. And there's support for Apple Watch and Pebble with no monthly fees or subscriptions required. And the best part, Automatic will never sell your data. Now, Automatic is normally $99.95, but when you use our special offer code TWIT, you're going to save 20%. Go to automatic.com slash TWIT for more information and to purchase and use offer code TWIT to save 20% off the regular purchase price. That's automatic.com slash TWIT and we thank them for their support. All right. I admit it. I'm a sucker for apps that make you go, what? And that's what this week's app is all about. Have you ever wanted to try on somebody else's face? And not in a leather face horror movie sort of way, that would be weird. What I mean is the virtual sense, like on your phone, that sort of way. An app called MSQRD, but 
meant to be pronounced as Masquerade, is here to creep you out. Even Facebook agrees this app is awesome. They announced just today that they bought the company. So let's take a look. All you have to do is frame your face in the outlines that appear on the screen. Now you'll select one of the masks in the carousel below. It's a limited carousel at this point, but more on that in a second. The default when you launch is this chimpanzee mask. And yeah, you can agree it's, it's pretty cre creepy as a, as a first mask to try on. There's this mustache guy that makes me look more like Borat than I care to admit. This other mustache guy almost makes me look like Tony Stark. Almost, not quite as awesome. Uh, there are dogs, tigers. Uh, there's this mask of an old person, which makes you feel like you can't see anymore. Uh, there's this abstract clown drawing, which is hard to describe. You just kind of got to see it in use. Uh, so this is actually a beta release of the app. The iOS counterpart has a lot more features, including animations built in and even more masks than what you see on the Android version. The developers say more masks are coming very soon to Android, and it's very similar to Snapchat filters, but obviously without the Snapchat part of the equation. One thing is for sure, you'll probably look pretty stupid to anyone that walks into the room while you're playing with this app. Masquerade is free in the Play Store. Masquerade is almost like looking into a magic mirror, and it's very strange to see your own face morphed with someone else's in real time. I can't wait for more features to be rolled into the app, though, because I may never put it down ever again. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can post those to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. Uh, the show plays live every Wednesday night, right around 5 p.m. Pacific, following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And a new episode will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.